Welcome to Insured Investors, where we share practical real estate investing tips with an insurance twist. I'm your host, Brooke Beats. Let's get started. Tropical storms and hurricanes can cause severe damage to properties in coastal locations. According to the NOAA, Office for Coastal Management, the average hurricane costs $22.8 billion in damages. So knowing how to properly insure hurricane-prone locations can be challenging. To explain the coverage for coastal locations and how they work together, we brought return guest Casey Carter. Casey is the VP of Business Operations and has over eight years of industry experience. Welcome back. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me back. All right, you ready to talk about coastal storms? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, what are the unique challenges associated with insuring coastal properties? Yeah, so coastal po- properties are are unique, like you said. There is an extreme chance that you're going to see damage from hurricanes, named storms, kind of one in the same, depending on which company you're working with. Flooding damage is going to be much greater the closer you get to the coast. And the ocean's a big body of water. Mm-hmm. So that water coming in towards your property, uh, that's just going to cause damage. So a hurricane, name storm, flood damage, uh, those are all a much greater risk when you get towards the coast. Mm-hmm. So let's start with hurricanes. How do investors ensure that they have proper coverage for the houses along the coast? So depending on what company you're working with, they again could change the name up of the coverage for you. So you want to make sure that you have a keen eye on your policy and are most importantly asking your agent, do I have coverage for this? So with NREG, for example, you have named windstorm coverage. It is any storm given a name by the National Weather Service could be tropical depression, tropical storm, cyclone, hurricane, mm-hmm. any of the sort. We have others that are just going to straight up call it hurricane. So we want to make sure that that coverage is instated on the policy itself and or is endorsed on the policy itself if you don't already have it. Could come with a separate wind and hail deductible. Could be the same as your current deductible already but you want to absolutely make sure you have coverage for those. You, again, as you move towards the coast, you're going to be in a higher risk for a flood zone. So making sure that you have coverage for that flood coverage itself, which is going to be any rising water. If it rains so much that that water starts to pile up from the ground, right, that's going to be flood damage, and those are things that you need to be insured for too. Okay, so I'm, what I hear you saying is flood is completely different from name storm coverage. That is correct. They okay. are going to be two completely separate policies. You know, if your agent is giving you a comprehensive policy with this and that, you want to make sure you see both of those things on that proposal or that quote that they're giving you. Okay, so a lot of times what we see insurance companies have exclusions regarding locations in different tiers along the coast. What is a tier? So tiers are just classifications, right? Uh, Again, the most important thing to remember in any type of coverage is coverages differ depending on which company you're with, Mm -hmm. which carrier you're with, and you want to make sure that you understand the definition. Uh, I sound like a broken record, but your agent's going to be the best person that can explain those things to you. Tiers can be classified by distance from coast. They can be classified by different counties. Here at NREG, we like to make it very clear cut. We draw that line in the sand. Hey, these couple counties are going to be Tier 1. These counties are Tier 2. And then anything more inland is going to be Tier 3. With us, Tier 3 coverage, name storm is always included. So with Tier 1 and Tier 2, that's where you have the option. If you're an investor who decides, maybe I really don't need name storm coverage, or I've owned these properties for 25 years, no name storm, no hurricanes ever hit me, and it's not going to. If you're in those tiered locations, you have the ability to choose and say, I don't want that coverage. I would like to exclude that coverage. And, and many times you're going to see your premium drop because of that. Mm -hmm. You just have to know as an investor that you're taking that risk. Yeah. So how, as a, say I'm an investor and I have a house on the coast, Mm -hmm. how would I know what tier it's in? 
the best way to figure that out is to just honestly ask your agent or ask them for a map. Okay. Can you tell me if I'm with if I'm looking to purchase a property within 20 miles of the coast, what is the risk that I'm really looking at? Mm-hmm. Am I going to be in a tiered zone? Are you guys considering that not in a tiered zone? The states are going to be different too. So there's this grouping of different appetite guides and different restrictions, policy restrictions that come with different states. So Again, the simplest answer is just ask your agent. They're there to help you, so they should be able to tell you that information. Okay. So if you have a policy that excludes name storm or hurricane, is there a way to add that coverage back on? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, asking your agent, hey, can I get this coverage again? They may have to shop your policy in order to find that coverage for you or possibly just endorse it onto the policy Mm -hmm. you currently have. But specifically with NREG, right, it's as simple as giving us a call, hey, I need to get this coverage added onto my property. Now, once you do that, you need to understand uh, to protect you, we're not going to remove that coverage once it's been added back on. If you talk to your neighbor, they tell you, hey, you know, I'm paying X amount for our insurance this year. And you think, well, I'm not paying anywhere close to that. Mm -hmm you're in a coastal property and you maybe you have a portfolio of five and they're saving tens of thousands of dollars you may not have that coverage and you might not know so absolutely reaching out to your agent to get those things added would be very easy you know that goes with flood coverage too because that's of course a risk you can get those added on to your policy but you need to make sure that you understand that there are different lines of coverage and you need to see both of those terms on there. Mm-hmm. So as with, as with any policy and any investor, it's just really understanding what your risk tolerance is and what you are willing to deal with. Exactly. Yeah. Again, if you think that no hurricane's ever going to hit your house, maybe that coverage isn't for you. Mm-hmm. You have the money on hand to fix a couple of roofs that you have within your portfolio and it's not going to dip too far into the bank. It's a completely different mindset than somebody who has one property and they work a nine to five. They're building up their portfolio. The risk appetite is completely different for those two investors. Yeah. Okay. So how do floods impact coastal areas differently than others? Again, you're just you're closer to the water, right? There's no bigger body of water than the ocean. Mm-hmm. And when it comes, it comes in force. So storm surge is a huge issue, especially when it comes to damaging hurricanes that come in. You don't just have to worry about the wind and hail that is pounding the side of your house or your roof. Mm -hmm. It's four foot of storm surge is now coming right towards your house. What do we do to protect that? Yeah. You know, there's measures that you can take, but the greatest measure you can take is having flood insurance. That water is coming from the ground up and is rising, rising water. That's where you're going to see flood coverage be the most beneficial to you. Okay. Uh, what can investors do to help prevent damage to their coastal properties? Yeah, so you can kind of look at it as different sections of your house, right? You have the roof. You can use roof anchors. The lower portion of the property, you have storm shutters. When the storms are coming in, you can board up the windows. Make sure that the doors are secure, sandbags, Mm -hmm. things of that nature for making sure that water doesn't seep into potentially a basement or any other portion of your property. But there's always steps that you can absolutely take to at least try to mitigate some of that damage. Okay. Great information. We're going to move into the game segment. Sure. You ready? Okay. So we're going to share some property damage examples that are related to hurricanes, and you're going to let us know how and if these would potentially be covered. Okay. A hurricane's strong winds rip off the roof, and the rainwater from the storm damages the interior of the property. Yeah, so if the initial peril is wind and hail, Mm -hmm. right, and it's a hurricane comes in, you have named storm coverage on your policy. The initial peril is going to be the wind, which is covered under basic and special form. When that 
rainwater comes in, the initial peril is wind, so it's potentially covered under your policy, yeah. Okay. During a named storm, strong winds picked up a tree branch, hurled it through the window at your property. The window was shattered, the rainwater leaked, and during a separate storm the next day, caused damage to the interior of the property. Yeah, that's a tough one because you have an initial peril that would be covered, but there's a separate occurrence mm -hmm. that comes into play too. That one is going to be a little tougher, and it, mo most likely in that case, because it's a separate occurrence that caused that damage on mm -hmm. the inside with that second storm, that one's going to be up for debate and, and potentially not covered. And likely it would you would need flood for that. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, it's no longer coverage from the initial storm. Name storm, yeah. Now you have water coming from the ground up, just like we talked about. And again, you need to see both of those things on your policy. Okay. Um, a storm surge causes water to seep into the property, damage, damaging flooring, furniture, and more. what you're covered for right if, <laughs> if you have flood coverage that storm surge that's exactly that's exactly what we were trying to preach a little bit ago mm -hmm. it's if you believe that you're at risk for that damage that's something that you absolutely want to make sure that you have yeah uh, that's uh, coastal properties are unique risks which is exactly what we're talking about right yeah so that's that's a perfect example of Looking back, seeing, man, I wish I would have had flood coverage on this property. Mm -hmm. Okay, last one. Shingles on the roof of your property were worn down from years of exposure to the elements, causing a slow leak from the roof into the attic. Heavy rain from a named storm caused water to seep through at an even higher rate. After the storm passes, you notice water damage, structural damage, and mold. Yeah, water damage, structural damage, mold from years and years of wear and tear on a roof. So, in many cases, what they might see is there wasn't a sudden impact of damage mm -hmm. on here. It took a long period of time for that roof to wear down. So, typical wear and tear is not covered yep. on all policies. Right. And then it damaged the property. Mm -hmm. The, the storm damage would have to be extremely significant, but in many cases, uh, that wear and tear is going to exclu exclude that peril from really paying out in this particular instance. Right. Because one thing that we do know is insurance is not a maintenance plan. Exactly. So wear and tear is never covered. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think everyone has a pretty good idea of how to cover properties for coastal areas. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Again, thanks for having me back. Yep.